Hey Wargamers, a couple days ago Games Workshop told us something we've been waiting months to hear, and that is when the Tau Empire Codex is going to be released. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. If you want to stay up to date on Tau, go ahead hit the subscribe button, that way you don't miss any of my upcoming uploads. Alright, so what did we learn? Well, Games Workshop talked about a bunch of different uh, upcoming releases, but what they told us about Tau was that it's coming in March. They didn't say exactly when in March, but going off some rumors and also just doing some simple math accounting for you know the amount of time that they have to do the preview and you know stuff like that it seems like March 10th is going to be a reasonable date for pre-orders on the codex meaning that it would go for sale proper on the 17th of March so that's kind of the time frame that I'm going to be working on I'm going to be assuming that it's going to go up for pre-orders on the 10th so not very far away that's pretty exciting and that's actually a little uh counter to what i thought going into this from lvo was that tower going to be kind of the second or or you know maybe the third release in this new xenos block that are coming out but no they're going to be the first which is pretty darn exciting so they told us that they told us it's going to come in march and i think it's going to be you know march 10th for pre-orders but they also told us that there are going to be uh, six different septs covered in the codex. And what they actually said was that there's going to be five septs plus Farside Enclaves. So that's pretty exciting. I mean, we knew that there were going to be sept rules in this book because uh, there's a bracketed sept keyword in, you know, most of the units in the index. So they had to address that in some way. It wasn't just going to be left as a blank thing. So there, of course, had to be some options there. But now they specified the number of SEPs that we're actually going to have. So five SEPs plus Farsight Enclaves. Um, we know what some of those are based on the index. We know, of course, that Farsight Enclaves are, are going to be there. We also know that the Tau SEPT, the Tau Homeworld, is going to be there. So that's two of the six. And then the third is going to be Vior Law because uh, that's already in the index as well. So we got three of the six covered. That just leaves us the question of what are the other three? Um, I think probably there's there's a few good options. I mean, they, they say they're the most famous worlds, but uh, I've never seen a popularity poll of Tau Sep, so I don't know exactly what the most popular planets are. But you know, if I just kind of look at the fluff and, and take a stab at it, um, I kind of think that uh, Dalith is going to be in there. There's you know other units that are from Dalith. Um, it seems like that's a, a pretty low hanging fruit for them to incorporate into the Codex. I also think that Nadras would be an awesome uh, sept to have as a um, another kind of major world that's being covered here. And then also um, Borkan could be a cool one too. Um, so those are, are three that I think are kind of more likely than not to be included. Um, other things like Deandi or Elsir, um, they could be included as well. I could kind of make up rules for what I might think would be in there. But let's just talk about these six. What do I think those six SEPs are going to have for their special roles? Well, uh, for the Tau homeworld, for Tau, um, you know, that one's actually kind of hard. I could see it being something based around jetpacks, but I also, you know, going with the, the you know, centralized command component of this could see there being some benefits for commanders or, more importantly, for ethereals. It seems like ethereals would be a good fit for the Tau um, sept rule. So maybe, you know, increasing the range of that or allowing them to take, uh, to do multiple um, uh, invocation of the elements or something like that. That would be kind of cool. Um, for Vera Law, I think it's you know pretty handily going to be something that benefits infantry, so something that benefits uh, strike teams or breacher teams or pathfinders. Um, anything like that, I think, is going to be a, a good bet for them. Maybe something that benefits pulse weapons. You know, uh, for Farsight Enclaves, it almost has to be something that's going to benefit crisis suits. I think there there would be riding in the streets um if if you could get, get enough people in one location to do it um there you know people would be really upset if farsight enclaves didn't have some sort of benefit for crisis suits so uh i think that's pretty much a shoe in that farsight enclaves has to have some benefit there um for nadras nadras would be awesome as like a benefit to stealth suits and ghost keels and maybe even sniper drones and maybe even pathfinders like maybe there's a way you could you know, can't, you know, put all those things into one, but um, 
really I think that's going to be like the the minus one to hit or um, some benefit to the stealth field from Nidras. Uh, Delith. Delith has this history of being, um, you know, embattled by the Imperium, so some benefit to plasma weapons or something, um, you know, plus one to wound against Imperium, that would be something that I could imagine there. Um, and then Borkan has um, a lot of earth cast on it, so maybe something that benefits hammerheads or increases the number of relics or signature systems you could take, that would be pretty cool. So that's kind of what I think are going to be the six steps that we are including in the codex and what I think their perks might be. Let me know what you think the steps and their perks are going to be in the comments below. And of course, I will keep you guys updated with every little bit of news that we get. They say that uh, they're going to be releasing more information soon, so hopefully that's today. And uh, of course, we will have fun talking about it until the codex drops So, uh, and, and even beyond that. So yeah, thanks for watching and of course, happy wargaming. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank all my patrons over on Patreon. Uh, your support really makes a difference for me and I really appreciate it. Uh, special thanks goes out to No Excuse Panda, Paul Luters, Tao Oswell, Andy Young, Peter Benjamin Parker, Deverson, and Giovanni DiMaggio. Uh, you guys rock, thank you. If you liked this video particularly well, uh, head on over to Patreon and consider joining our community over there. Thanks as always and happy wargaming.